Hello one and all and welcome to your ultimate beginners crafting and gathering guide for New World. I say beginners because since they started revamping the crafting system in January, there's just so many new things that go into these systems now and it's difficult to cover them all in one go. And on top of that, we don't have a lot of public footage to go off of, but during the special expedition event, I made a special reminder in my head to make sure I went over each and every refining and crafting station to get enough footage to also make this video too. Now if you're brand new to the trade skill system of New World, here's some of the basics you'll need to know. There are a total of 7 crafting related skills, 5 different refining skills, and 5 different ones for gathering. The gear system of New World is separated by tiers, it goes from tier 1 all the way up to tier 5. Every trade skill, including the refining and gathering ones, all have a hard cap of 200. For the equipment side of things, we'll break that down more in a bit, but this game does feature a gear score system that can be influenced by the tiers. The first gathering skill we have is woodcutting, also known as logging in game. This is the trade skill you'll be using to cut down trees. It starts off with the young trees that you can cut down right away, and from these you can get regular wood and semi-rare items such as petrified wood. At level 50 woodcutting, you're able to cut down mature trees that now start to provide a different kind of wood. One thing to mention as well is to start gathering, you have to walk up to a node or resource and press E. You do not have to hold it down. After the mature trees, we've got weird wood. This is a magical type of tree normally associated with Azoth, one of the magical resources of the island. When you start cutting this, you're gathering resources of tier 4 in the woodcutting section. And just like the regular trees, you do have some rare resources you can get from time to time gathering this too. Your chances of getting these rare items can be influenced by different things like gathering gear with perks on it, gathering food, and things like that which we'll talk about later. After weird wood, we have the final resource known as iron wood. These trees are harder to find but will be the max tier tree that you'll be able to cut. Next we have mining which is associated with various professions including stone cutting and not just smelting. Starting off the bat, you're able to mine iron at level 0, silver at 10, oil from seeping stones at 20, and then gold ore at 45, and alchemy stones like spring stones or scorch stones at 50, with iron being tied to professions like armor crafting and weaponsmithing, and silver and gold being tied to jewel crafting and stone cutting, alongside platinum and of course regular rocks that you can also mine. Tier 4 starts at star metal, gatherable at 100 mining, lodestone which is a higher tier form of stone at 105, Platinum of course at 110, and Ori Chalcum which is tier 5 at 175 mining. You probably noticed that the levels for gathering these resources is different from the level they're tracked at. The tracked at portion means once you get past that threshold, you're able to see these resources on your compass when you get within a certain range. Some resources can also show up on the map, and all of the gathering professions have something just like this. For fishing, this is something that was added last year during the Reekwater update. You can go to any body of water and press F3 to pull out a fishing rod if you have one equipped, and you can use the fish bait that can be found or crafted, along with fishing spots to increase your chances of further success. There are two different types of water you can fish in, fresh water which would usually be a lake or river, and then salt water which might be associated with marsh or maybe the ocean. Where you fish and what type of bait is used, along with if you use a fishing spot or regular spot on the map, can determine what kind of fish you get, and fish is also something you can use for cooking. Now once you cast your line, you just play the fishing mini game by reeling it in with holding down the left mouse button, but making sure to let go for a couple of seconds so you don't snap the line. Rinse and repeat, and you'll have yourself a fish in no time. For harvesting, you'll be able to start gathering farm plants as well as hemp, fungi, and magical creatures right away, magical plants at level 30 like dragon glory plants or life blooms, silkweed at 100 which would be tier 4, and wire fiber at 175. Now this profession is mainly associated with alchemy and tailoring, but the fungi you gather that can include the prisma blooms can give you pigments for crafting colored dye in the cooking station, and then you can apply that to gear. The magical plants and creatures will give you different resources you can use for magic gathering or alchemy in general, and this will consist of resources like dragon glory plants, life blooms, salamander snails, and many more. With any of the gathering professions, the tools also have tiers associated with them just like the gear. And the tier of the tool can affect your gathering speed, alongside your chance of gaining rare resources just like the gathering food, trophies you place in your house, gear with gathering or crafting perks on it, etc. And the higher you get in both these gathering and crafting professions, it increases your chance of getting rare outcomes in the previous tiers. So like if I'm at 100 mining, and I go back and start farming silver ore in the hopes of getting uncut gems for stone cutting, I might have a better chance of getting those lower tier gems from the node. And finally we have tracking and skinning. 
This will be related to any profession that uses hide or animal parts to conduct its business. Starts off with small prey like rabbits, turkeys, peacocks, things like that. Now it says that the rest of them are at zero, which is true for the boars, deer, low level wolves, and bison too. But as you start hunting higher level animals, especially like bears, the Eden Grove wildlife, corrupted animals, things like that, and you'll start noticing that the skinning level requirement will start raising after about level 25 to 30 plus mobs. Just like the other gathering professions, certain crafting recipes will require rare items only obtainable from certain levels or tiers of enemies. So like you might come across a named or regular recipe that requires a material like scar hide. And then if you look at the tooltip, it'll tell you it has a chance to come from skinning creatures around that tier, both regular and rare. For the refining trade skills, basically these are what we use to connect the gap from gathering skills to crafting skills. There's five total, starting with smelting that mainly deals with metal ingots for various professions, but also allows you to smelt bars used for jewel crafting and charcoal alongside that. Early on you'll start with charcoal and bars like silver and iron, and eventually work your way up to steel and gold at tier 3, and star metal, platinum, and ori chalcum at tiers 4 and 5, and eventually as modium as the last one. You'll also notice that there is a material recovery section. This will be common in multiples of the refining professions, and this allows you to break down higher tier materials to convert them into lower ones for crafting. This will be good to know because if you prefer rushing to end game before you begin farming crafting and gathering levels, which that method does have its perks, then any higher tier materials that you get from either salvaging or gathering from chest out in the open world can be converted back down to give you a head start. You also notice secondary materials in here for when you actually start the refining process. The flux, as they call it, refers to the secondary material that you can use to refine ore. And there's other ones for the other refining skills like solvent, sandpaper for wood, and tannin plus crossweave. We also now have what are known as material converters. These were added a while back in one of the patches, and essentially it allows you to convert one of your secondary ingredients for refining into another one. For this you need a material converter item that can only be purchased at a faction shop. This is a useful method because it allows you to take the secondary ingredients you have stockpiled and turn them into something you really need. Second refining profession is going to be woodworking. Starts with regular timber from the young trees, then it moves into lumber that needs aged wood specifically from the mature trees, weird wood right after that as we talked about in the woodcutting skill, and lastly both ironwood and glittering ebony for the max tier resource. And again, just to point out the rare resources, with the glittering ebony you also need to obtain things that only have a chance to drop from the tier 5 trees to be able to refine this. You'll see things like this pop up on the crafting side too. Next up we've got leatherworking. Early on we've got coarse leather that takes raw hide usually coming from lower tier animals, then we've got rugged leather at tier 3, layered leather at tier 4, and both infused and runic leather at tier 5. And with this one when it comes to skinning, it can be difficult to know right off the bat where you get these different types of leather from. You'll definitely get raw hide from just about any animal below level 20, and for the iron hide, you'll get that around level 50 plus animals, since that'll be where tier 5 technically begins. And then in between that, you'll see thick hide normally associated with animals before 50, but above around 30 to 35. And then for the fur, because that'll be used to craft specific armor sets, you'll normally find that in about the 20 to 25 plus range. For the weaving, this one's pretty simplistic. Starts off with linen that's made with fiber that you'll gather from hemp, sauteen at tier 3 and then silk at tier 4, and the silk threads come from the silk weed plant. And finally, both infused silk and phoenix weave for tier 5 and the wire fiber for the infused silk will come from the wire fiber plants. And then finally we've got ourselves the stone cutting, which is also more of a crafting profession now instead of just refining. Stone cutting will deal with refining stone and lodestones into blocks, but also cutting gemstones for allowing you to socket them into gear to get different benefits based on the one you put. And each of these gems have multiple different effects that can apply. It's all based around if you put the gem inside of a weapon, or if you put it inside of a piece of armor. For example, take a look at this ruby gem. If you put the gem inside of a weapon, you can convert 20% of the damage to fire. The damage will scale based off the weapon damage or the character's intelligence, whichever's higher. Now there is a system all on its own behind this, and there's a handful of other elemental gems that do the same thing but for different elements. But we also have ones like amber that instead stack off focus. So this effect basically gives you the opportunity to come up with battle mage and paladin builds. On the flip side of that, if you put these gems into armor, it would normally give damage absorption for that specific element. There are other types of gems that give completely different kinds of effects, like the Malachite that gives you extra damage during crowd control, the Emerald that would give you increased damage against targets with lower health, things like that. 
On the other side of stone cutting, we now have the expedition tuning orbs and arena orbs. Both of these were added not too long ago to the stone cutting profession to increase its popularity. The expedition keys are what we need to enter the five player dungeons such as Amrine Excavation, Dynasty Shipyard, Garden of Genesis, and a few more. In these recipes, you'll notice a variety of different materials required to make them. And this is a recurring theme in all the crafting professions when we get to the higher tiers. But the secret is always reading the tooltips on different materials. They added this a while ago to where it now shows us exactly where to find or make these items instead of you having to guess. And specific ones like material converters or runes of holding for bags or storage chests or even these material chisels can only be purchased from the faction vendor. Crafting some of these items may be extremely tedious in nature at the moment, but that's why it's crucial to keep giving feedback on these systems. And also, when we're initially leveling up, we should get individual quest lines to do these pieces of content, and those quest lines will give us one of the expedition or arena keys for free. Now before we move on to the full crafting section, there's some tips and tricks I wanted to make sure I went over to set you up for success. The first thing is as a crafter, as we talked about before, all of the trade skills now have a hard cap of 200 used to be different, but over the years there's been some major changes to the crafting system. And you know how the gear system goes by tiers? Well as you progress through the different tiers, you start becoming more efficient at crafting items from the previous tier. Like if you get to tier 4, you're going to start crafting max quality items from tier 3 more often. And the way the quality system works is that it starts from grey gear, known as common, then we move to green gear known as uncommon, blue gear known as rare, purple gear as epic, and finally orange as legendary. Each of these respective quality levels is largely determined by multiple factors such as the amount of perks an item has. A while back it was also made possible for gear to have attributes tied to it. So after you reach level 60 and spend the 190 total attribute points you've accumulated, the rest of your attribute gains are going to come mostly from gear. And gear is also capable of having gem slots along with these perks while crafting. And this is what you can socket those cut gemstones into that we went over earlier for stone cutting. If you use Azoth, which is the magical resource we went over, then during the process of crafting you'll have a higher chance of gaining a gem slot, attributes, and perks on the item. By default there will always be a chance for this, but it can be further influenced not only by Azoth, but also the crafting gear that's similar to the gathering gear we talked about earlier. And this is just equipment you can get your hands on that has perks for increasing the gear score of the items you make. This along with house trophies, gathering and crafting food, leveling up the trade skill in general, and even territory buffs that get set through settlement management and executed through town projects. Even the secondary resources used during the crafting process, it all adds up. And as a crafter, you need to be aware and fully utilize all of this if you want to create some of the best gear possible. Another thing to point out is that during the January update of this year, a lot of changes were made to the crafting system. One of the things they did is added unique, named weapons that were capable of being crafted or found in New World, which means all the crafting recipes you see in the crafting menus are not the entire roster of things you can create. There's what's known as artifact recipes and regular ones. The artifact ones are one-time use that are normally associated with the higher quality type of equipment, and the regular schematics allow you to unlock the recipes forever. These are normally exclusive to the equipment crafting process, but furnishing also has something like this, where you can't create every single furniture item right from the get-go. Secondary materials was another mechanic that was expanded upon during the January update. Now you can choose from a variety of different new materials to use while crafting, including being able to use higher tier or lower tier resources in the secondary slots to affect the gear score outcome. This is extremely useful because let's say your crafting item requires star metal, but for the secondary resource you're all out of tier 4 hide or maybe cloth, if you have a surplus from the other tiers, you can use it in these brackets. And of course the gear score of the item will affect how useful they end up being when you craft them. Another couple things to keep in mind is that firstly we have to remember that what we can craft is limited by the level of the actual crafting station. When the game first begins, more than likely the majority of these benches will be at tier 2 or 3. That means that you have to work with the community through town projects to upgrade those benches before you're able to make use of them as a crafter. That's where the social aspect and community aspect comes in. You can also salvage equipment that you make or just find out in the world through the menu. And when your gear is broken, it'll start operating at half capacity. You need to use repair parts from salvaging and gold to fix it. Another thing is that gear now has what I call gear labels that affect what type of attributes you'll see on it. You'll notice over time that you'll see gear pieces say things like blank breastplate of the nomad or the berserker the zealot things like that what this does is tell you and it'll usually show you which attributes you're going to get gains for by equipping the item 
This is always crucial to keep track of in case you're looking for a specific set for your build, and there are special resources that you can find for mob drops, looting chests, and other means like out in the world that you can then use during the crafting process to have a higher chance of getting specific attribute bonuses or perks, which is yet another really good thing to keep in mind as a crafter so that when you make the highest tier gear, you can make valuable pieces of it. And speaking of rare resources, the last thing is that like we talked about before, when we start crafting the higher tier gear, rare resources are going to be needed to make these items. You'll notice on most of the named items after green quality, it'll stop letting you add special resources to them for having a higher chance of getting specific perks. And the ones that have the unrecognizable resources are the ones you really need to look at the tooltip for. Some of these items will have a rare chance to drop while doing regular gathering on nodes around this tier, or drop from humanoid mobs, or even boss monsters. For the gathering side, you need to make sure you equip gear with gathering perks on it and gathering food, plus something else that can help is taking a look at which attributes increase your yield or gathering speed so you can do it more efficiently. Like after you get over 250 points of dexterity, you also get a 10% yield on the skinning side of things. There's also other mechanics that help influence stuff like this, like the perks you have on gathering tools themselves and the tiers of them which will increase the gathering speed. But keep all, if not most of the stuff in mind and you'll do just fine in the end. Now moving to a brief description of each and every crafting profession, let's go ahead and start with weaponsmithing. So this profession takes place primarily at the forge workbench. Here is where you're able to craft things like swords, great axes, rapiers, and warhammers, with both spears and hatchets also being craftable inside the forge, but those are directly linked to the engineering skill. Metal armor is also made inside this bench, but instead it goes off the armor crafting skill. Weapon crafters are also able to make repair kits for equipment and honing stones for increasing your weapon's damage temporarily. Consumables will be very crucial throughout your journey, so keep things like this in mind. Next up, we have the armor crafting skill, also known as armoring. It takes place primarily at the outfitting station. This is where you'll craft light armor, medium leather armor, fur armor, all-purpose bags that increase your carry capacity, jewelry that increases your attributes but also goes off the jewel crafting skill, repair kits for your equipment, and absorption bombs. Then we've got engineering, which takes place primarily at the workshop bench. Here's where we've got our muskets, bows, ammunition and arrows, tools like pickaxes for mining, fishing poles for fishing, logging axe for woodcutting, skinning knife for skinning, and sickles for harvesting. This bench also has furnishing items for your house and goes off the furnishing trade skill. Don't forget that you'll need to find more furniture items and schematics in the open world for expanding your options. This profession also lets you craft house trophies for getting various different buffs in combat, gathering, and crafting. They'll be very useful in just about anything that you do. Key thing to point out too is that you'll have to craft the baseline version of the trophies now, and then you're only able to upgrade them from there. It's no longer possible to find a trophy in its max tier form in the open world. Last thing for this profession is you can create repair kits, incense boosters that give you resistance to afflictions, and proficiency boosters for increasing the amount of resources gathered. Next we have the Arcana skill, famously known for alchemy and it takes place in the Arcana repository. This is where you'll craft your fire staffs, life staffs, ice gauntlets, and consumables like healing potions, mana potions, focus potions, and regeneration potions. We also have the ability to craft coatings here that allow you to take extra damage against different types of enemies, including beasts, the lost, the ancients, corrupted, and the angry earth. Wards come in next like the beast wards, corrupted wards, ancient wards, things like that which give you resistance to these types of mobs on top of also having elemental wards like fire absorption, lightning, void, arcana, nature, etc. And the last thing for Arcana is that using this bench is the only way you can upgrade the elemental essence items, like death essence, water essence, fire essence. You can now use the lower tier magical items to upgrade into higher tier via this Arcana bench. And for the very last profession, we've got ourselves the cooking trade skill. It takes place in the kitchen and just like the name suggests, this is where you create different types of food items including mana recovery food, health recovery, fish bait for fishing, and even both gathering and crafting food. And this station is also where you craft dyes too. But I would say that the gathering and crafting foods are some of the most important things you'll get out of this. When it comes to being a successful crafter in New World, you need to make sure that you're always using every available resource and help available to you to the best of your ability. Now since things are always dynamically changing in New World, this time next year these systems might be drastically different. But it should give you the overall gist of things and help you get started and understand these systems. In the meantime though, thank you very much for joining me for this crafter and gatherer's beginner guide. Hope you have a wonderful night or day, and farewell.